The residential school legacy is a horrible, dark part of Canadian history. It was a genocidal, assimilative policy against Indigenous children, the most vulnerable of society, to steal them from their parents, to beat their culture out of them, and to damn them for everything that they were. And I think that it's about time that the truths of these horrors are being unearthed. I'm Brandy Morn, and I'm a freelance journalist for Al Jazeera English. And between us, I carry these people and their stories in my heart. I am from the Michelle First Nation. I am Cree, Iroquois, and French. My own Kukum, which is grandmother in Cree, um, attended residential school. But I would always hear her talk about the convent. And it wasn't until after she passed that I realized that these were actually like concentration camps for Indigenous children. Approximately 150,000 Indigenous children uh, were sent to these institutions. And the goal was to kill the Indian and the child to strip them of their indigenous identity. They estimated during the Truth and Reconciliation Commission that there was approximately 4,000 children unaccounted for, but those numbers have gone way up since, and they estimated it could be up to 30,000 now. The Maryville Residential School operated in the Cowesness First Nation in Saskatchewan. They had found the remains of 751 people. I went to Cowesness and I met a survivor from the Maryville Residential School named Barry Kennedy. He was forced to take part in giving the last rites to a schoolmate as they were being buried. And we buried them. Uh, over there somewhere. And he showed me the spot somewhere in the field over there, he pointed. He shared how he went through sexual abuse and rape and spiritual, mental, verbal, emotional abuse. But he told me to this day, he doesn't know how not to be angry or how to heal. And he's a 65 year old man who broke down in tears, crying as if he was that little boy again and telling me, how do you heal from this? If somebody could tell me how. And it was just really heartbreaking to see that. I met another survivor, Ursuline Redward. She was around eight years old and her cousin, who was nine years old and slept in the bed next to her, died in that bed. And she said that she got up one morning and the nurses were all ringing their bells for everyone to get up and she tried moving her cousin to tell her to get up because they had a routine to go follow and then her cousin didn't move. And so she went to go get ready and came back and seen the nurses gathered around her bed and they took her away. But she said, every night after that, I was terrified and, and slept with the sheets over my head. At the end of May, the Tukumlups First Nation announced the discovery of the remains of 215 Indigenous children that died attending the residential school there. And this like just sent shock raves around the world. And there was people from all cultures and backgrounds. There was like white families bringing their children there and showing their children and crying with their children. And I've been doing this a long time and I have never seen our country coming together like that before. And it was really encouraging and really inspiring. The bones of these children were under our feet. And that after all these years, their cries are finally being heard. We also know that reconciliation is not going to happen soon. But we have a generation now that is the first generation to really have not been forced to attend residential schools. And we are reclaiming our culture, we are reclaiming our languages, and reviving everything that the residential schools tried to snuff out of us. And so it's a really beautiful you know, thing to see. <laughs>